Hello everyone. My name is Noah James Gonzalez. Friends and families call me Nonong Gonzalez. A name given to me by my grandpa which I like and a name which established my identity. I invite you together with my mom Angelia, Grandma Nancy, Tita Gian, and my grandpa Jimmy to come travel with me as I journey around the world to see the beautiful places its people and culture, and taste its native delicacies. Crocodile farming in the Philippines refers to agricultural industries involving the raising and harvesting of crocodiles for the commercial production of crocodile meat and crocodile litter. In the Philippines, crocodile farmers breed and raise two species of Philippine crocodiles, the Philippine saltwater crocodile or Crocodilus porosos and the Philippine freshwater crocodile or Crocodilus mendorensis. Farms that trade crocodile skin are regulated by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. Crocodiles help maintain the balance of the Philippine ecosystem such as wetlands. Crocodile farming in the Philippines is also geared towards the rescue and conservation of both Crocodilus porosos and the endangered and endemic Crocodilus mendorensis. Crocodile farms also contribute to tourism in the Philippines and offer public education about crocodiles. The first crocodile breeding farm in the Philippines was started in Puerto Princesa, Palawan in 1987 and operated from its inauguration until 1994 with technical assistance and cooperation from the Japanese government. The crocodile farm in Nature Park founded to prevent the further decline of the two species of Philippine crocodile will promoting socio-economic well-being of local communities. It farms sustainably and is registered with CITES, the first such crocodile farm in the Philippines. It was renamed the Crocodile Farming Institute. Pioneer veterinarian and journalist Jesse Ortega started working at the CFI in 1988 and became the CFI's director in 
1989. The CFI was expanded in 2000 to incorporate a wildlife rescue center, an eco-destination park, and a training center and was renamed as the Palawan Wildlife Rescue and Conservation Center. In 2005, it was reported that the facility was already overpopulated and losing 3 to 5 million pesos a year. In 2013, the PWRCC, under the management of the Protected Areas and Wildlife Bureau of the Department of Environment, and natural resources were breeding over 600 Mindoro crocodiles and over 700 Philippine saltwater crocodiles for commercial purposes. Two species of crocodiles are indigenous to the Philippines. The saltwater crocodile or Crocodilus porosus, also known as the Indo-Pacific crocodile, tribes in the Indo-Pacific region, Australia, Brunei, India, Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Singapore, and Thailand. The Mindoro crocodile or Crocodilus mindorensis is unique to the Philippines that tends to prepare a freshwater habitat. The latter is considered critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. It is found in Mindoro, Boswanga, Palawan, Masbati, Negros, Samar, and then the island of Sulu. As both are threatened because of loss of their habitats to humans, conservation efforts apply to them both. Crocodile farming under CITES is geared toward the rescue and sustainable exploitation. Crocodile skins are extremely valuable, priced by the centimeter, and are used in the production of luxury leather goods by firms such as luxury fashion brands like Louis Vuitton. In particular, the hide of 
Crocodelos porosos is the most commercially valuable of any crocodilian. It is highly prized for its regular, almost perfect pattern symmetry, and is the type used almost exclusively by Hermes. Crocodile skin versions of Birkin bag and Kelly bag are made from the skin of the Crocodilos porosos. Meat is sold locally to tourists and to restaurants across the country. One kilogram of crocodile meat can fetch between 400 and 1,000 pesos, that is from $9 to $22 in 2013. The meat supposedly has aphrodisiac properties and can be used to cook traditional Philippine dishes. It may be found in prepared meals such as adobo, sisig, or made into hot dogs and burgers, or used in soap. Export markets include China and Russia. As I post here, I hope you enjoy our ride. Don't forget to watch my next episode and please hit the red subscribe button below for it means so much for me. Until next time, thank you so much. Special thanks to Mrs. Amalia Gonzalez of Los Angeles, California, the Banaked of Chicago, Illinois, the Dumaliang of Chicago, Illinois, Greg and Mary Chris Asseline from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, the Diaros from Balasan, Eloilo, Jose Graelios from Balasan, Eloilo, and Kyle DiCiardo from Balasan, Eloilo.